These are the books I plan on reading in 2024. And while there are a couple of fiction or biography titles in there, the majority are about storytelling or video editing. Let me explain why. I don't know shit about video editing or storytelling. But first and foremost, you might be wondering what does this have to do with mobile filmmaking and trust me, it does. The device itself is not important. If you are identifying yourself as a creative person in this visual medium, it won't matter whether you're shooting on a camcorder, on film, on a freaking Ari Alexa or a smartphone. What matters though is knowing what you're doing and knowing how to do it. You know, how to tell stories, how to build them, how to present them so they don't end up sucking. Honestly, it took me a bit of time to admit that to myself, but I don't really know that much about video editing or storytelling in general. I was convinced that I was filming or editing based on intuition. And if I felt like things were making sense, then they 100% were. They were not at fault and while yes, some of those things did work based on that, you know, approach of, you know, intuition first and all of that, and a decision on how to shoot a certain scene or how to cut a certain scene were coming from somewhere deep within where I didn't question it and I trusted it because I felt like it was based on a strong emotion that I was feeling at the moment and I was trusting myself that that emotion was corresponding correctly to what the scene needed or what the cut needed. Honestly, most of the time it doesn't work like that. You see, I used to have this system. I would go out and shoot whatever short film I had scripted or on some occasions even improvised on the go and then I would go home, offload all of my footage on my tablet, yes I used to it on a tablet, not a PC or a laptop, and then I would sit with my little S Pen and my little KineMaster screen and I would edit the whole thing in like a couple of hours and then I would clean it up a little bit, add some music, maybe add some sound effects and then I would just upload it to YouTube and wait. However, while some of the films worked, they worked at a very beginner, you know, almost kind of like student level. And for that reason, they had all of the mistakes that you would expect with early student films or just beginner films and with beginner editors as well. And that stemmed from two things, my lack of understanding of the craft and my impatience. Which is what this massive pile of books aims to fix, mainly by teaching me more about video editing and storytelling, but even more so about discipline. Because honestly, I'm not disciplined enough. Yes, this video is less about the books themselves, although why these? The Art of the Cut is kind of like a roundtable discussion with top of the top video editors on some of the biggest movies on their approach, workflow techniques, you name it. Cut to the Monkey is kind of about finding the funny in any project. It's not only a collection of Roger Nightgar's experiences, but it's also packed with editing and career focused tips. Blink of an Eye is kind of like the OG book. It's theoretical to a degree and offers insights into the basic practicalities of editing, plus focuses on why emotion comes first. Story offers super rich knowledge in storytelling, and I think it falls on the more philosophical level. You know, what makes a good story, how and why does it work? And because one book on storytelling on screenwriting wasn't enough, I also got the foundations of screenwriting, which basically builds your knowledge on the fundamental guidelines for all things screenwriting. And yet, because two books on storytelling on screenwriting weren't enough, there is a third. Save the Cat had me on the fence at first because I think it is very Hollywood story structure-esque, but I think there are a lot of gold nuggets to be derived from here. I think there is a lot of knowledge to be drawn from this book as well, so I decided to give it a chance. And if you're asking exactly how is a stack of books going to teach me discipline. Well, for starters, each of these books is so wonderfully rich in know-how, in thinking, in doing, and offer a deeper, more intricate view into the world of filmmaking and editing and storytelling that, honestly, my dopamine levels spike up just at the thought of going through all of these, reading them and learning from them and just having access to them. However, I know that I'm not super good at retaining information 
fiction when the subject matter is not fiction. So this is where note taking comes into place. I can skim over all of these books, but why not read them more meticulously? That makes more sense, doesn't it? Which is where the process start taking a bit of a different shape of a, you know, more focused hour or so taking notes, then reviewing those notes down the line. I'm cheating a little bit because I've already started implementing some discipline into my daily routine, but it boils down to this. I want to understand editing better and be a better editor, even like 1% better than the previous film, the previous video last year, you name it. Therefore, I need to understand which shots are redundant, how to build a strong concept and understanding of the scenes, how to avoid dips in action and dynamic, decide on which shots I would linger more on and on which shots I will not, why am I even spending time there, inform every decision that they make, why am I making it, what's the purpose of it, how would I defend those choices, therefore I need more discipline. So I added 30 minutes to one hour of reading every day and I started with this book, it's really interesting, I've had it for about a year, which again goes to tell you everything you need to know about me in discipline. You see all of these sticking things out are just markers that I've left myself or things that I find interesting inside the book, things that I want to remember or just note down so I can easily go back to that. And after I read the chapter, I would usually go back or maybe after two chapters, just really depends. And I would see all of the markers that I left myself and see where I left them. So I would just sort of try to systemize or kind of like note down, but in my own words. So, you know, I try to understand it and try to translate it so it's easier for me when I look at it. I don't just copy whatever's written in the book because, you know, that doesn't really work. I think one of the reasons why I'm so focused on, you know, storytelling or just screenwriting books right now is because I'm a firm believer in the philosophy that an editor should also be a writer. I think it really comes down to being able to choose because when I admitted to myself that I'm not as disciplined as I believed I was. I wasn't exactly paying, you know, the right amount of attention or just retaining the right amount of information. I started researching the resources that I can, you know, start using and I instantaneously realized that there's way too much information to choose from. And that at the beginning can feel really overwhelming. It definitely felt overwhelming for me because I wanted to learn everything there is. The amount of time that you have to actually dedicate to, you know, learning gets more limited, you know, every single day almost. So I had to stop and choose which books, which podcasts and which YouTube channels. And obviously this list is going to get enriched over time and all of these are fantastic learning resources. It's kind of like building your own cool filmmaking almost. And the more involved you get into this, the more time you spend with it, you find more resources to add to that pile of, you know, learning things. But the key element here is to actually go through them, not just build a massive list of cool things that you want to read or watch and then never get to them, build a realistic list that you can actually keep up with. I also started an editing course, which I'm dedicating a couple of hours to, and then I would hop over to some of my personal projects or, you know, reading or listening to something or just watching a YouTube video. I kind of try to make it even or just focus on things that I'm feeling the strongest about right now. Some days I might just spend all of my hours in the editing course, some other days I I might spend like an hour and then jump over to a personal project. Other days I might just stick to my personal project and try to get that, you know, done with or just progress it a little bit more. It might sound a lot for about four-ish hours, I think, a day in it is. So again, this is where choosing where to spend your time makes a lot of sense. What I haven't started are actually two things. Filming more often, aka turning those multiple scribbled ideas into actual things, but also deciding which ideas necessitate the need for video, and expanding my network of cool people that do cool things, because I'm an introvert that can reply to anything with I can do it by myself, and that ain't working. That can be an okay attitude for a lot of situations, but not when you're learning stuff. You need a network to learn from them and with them to give feedback and get feedback that's actionable and constructive. So yeah, all of that, all of the above. That's the start of discipline. Chapter one, part one, take one. So I'm making 2024 a year of learning. Once this discipline muscle is built, 
she says with a confidence that it will indeed be built like an Icelandic strongman, there's only one thing left to do. Stick with it and try for that 1% better. I am not denying the intuition factor. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's insane that this exists on YouTube. It's so different from everything else. It's so patient. Where does this vision come from? A lot of it is like intuition. Like sometimes I don't really even know. I often rely on my intuition for certain things. I do try to analyze them for myself. Like even if, you know, is there a better you know, approach to it. A lot of choices while filming or writing or editing, you know, to pick a couple of creative areas are made purely based on intuition. Intuition and emotion are intertwined and first and foremost, you view your takes and choose them based on the emotion you feel while watching them. You know, that sort of tells you whether they're good or bad, usable or unusable. Economist Daniel Kahneman said this about intuition. Intuition is thinking that you know without knowing why you do. Granted, sometimes you'll be wrong, but depending on your level of emotional intelligence, not as often as you think. However, even with this intuition, wherever it falls in the emotional intelligence scale, I still felt that there was something missing. So admitting that I don't have the necessary skill set yet to be a better editor, to be a better storyteller, to be even a better writer, you know, when it comes to my own personal project, you know, that was kind of like the first step. You know, all of these things I often said that for mobile filmmaking, you should go out there and practice, 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 you know, try different things and experiment a lot. But I was never really implementing that upon myself with other things that I was doing, mobile filmmaking, but also editing, because I always felt that if I don't get it right the first time, then what am I doing wrong? Why am I not getting it right the first time? Obviously, nobody knows how to do certain things right off the get-go, right? There is no, you know, fast lane to get good at this, to get good at anything. You need to spend time and focus time and discipline time with any, you know, creative medium. Spend some time thinking about how can you implement learning learning into your daily routine. When I look back at this video or just at this point in time, like next year, I want to be able to say, yeah, sure, I was there you know, at this point in my like journey in the end of 2023, but now it's kind of like the end of 2024. And these are the things that I was able to learn and I was able to create based on all of these learnings that I've sort of kind of like gathered throughout the year. So yeah, it's pretty much you are sort of going through the hero's journey, almost kind of ish and getting out of that changed, hopefully. And I'm fully aware that there are going to be off days. Days where I don't feel like doing anything, where you might not feel like doing anything. It's not a competition. There's not like a race that you're supposed to be competing in. This is kind of like you finding your own pace and making sure that when you have off days, to sort of not be tempted to make that a permanent thing. Every once in a while, I would, you know, look at my watch and I would be like, oh, I should be like, editing in an hour, but I don't really feel like doing that today. I would just take that hour to do anything else. I would cook, I would walk around, maybe I would exercise a little bit, you know, just do different things. It's going to be a lot easier to do this than keep postponing it and feeling bad about it. This is why I'm dedicating the entire next year to learning and to going through these books, to going through the course and getting better by both of these things. So yeah, I really hope that this video didn't all of a sudden get kind of sad or real. Also, take small bites. The urge to rush through everything can sometimes be really overwhelming because there's never enough time, right? The small bites approach is a lot more rewarding because it allows you to spend time thinking and doing and analyzing Take notes, read one chapter at a time. Whatever works for you and whatever allows you to go through the material in a systematic way that allows you to digest whatever that material is, whether it's a podcast, a book, a, a video, a course, you name it. I wanted to read you something to finish this video off. It's a quote featured in the preface of the book In the Blink of an Eye. It's from Francis Coppola talking about Walter Murch. Whereas I make instantaneous decisions relying on emotion and intuition only, Walter is also thoughtful and careful and methodical in every step he takes.
So I guess I'll be making another video sometime down the line, sort of as a mental check to see, you know, where I am at with all of these, like which books have resonated more with me and maybe which haven't exactly as I've probably anticipated them to resonate. And also what I've gathered from them and what I've started to implement from them. So yeah, that'll be, that'll be interesting to see. But until then, or just until the next time and the next video, stay hip, stay tuned and stay motivated.